All right, this is gonna be a quick little showing of this Ademco 685 digital alarm receiver. Now, this is a very old central station receiver, but with very new software. So it supports actually some newer formats. I've always wanted one of these receivers since like I've, the whole time I've been interested in alarm reporting and all that stuff, and I finally got one, so that's awesome. And I, I tell you, these things are neat. So um, this will actually take contact ID and a Demco Express and a Demco High Speed formats, as well as Pulse and BFSK. Pulse can be 10 pulses a second and 20 pulses a second. I don't know about 40. I think it does, but I haven't tested. Now, um, I do have it connected to a software that's just uh, logging all the automation packets and acknowledging them. I don't have it connected to a printer, um, but we'll just be able to show it from the front panel operation here. So it's currently in automatic mode because this button on the left um, is in the out position. See these, if I push it and put it into, like it'll stay in and it'll put it in manual mode. Now down here we have an Ademco Lynx R-EN just for testing purposes. Time is obviously not set on that, but um, it's set up to report using contact ID. And I do have seven line cards installed in this receiver. I also have the card that presumably lets you use those long range radio transceivers. So I'll have to, maybe I'll get a hold of one of those someday and try to get that to work as well. But for now, it's working great for phone reporting. So I'll just kind of give you an overview here. You have the silence alert button on the right, which you can't really see because of the shadow. System test button in the middle, which that just lights up every segment. And here, I'll show that. Uh, battery test, which there's no battery connected, but you hold that in for a little bit and this light starts flashing and it does a battery test. Uh, AC power LED, which is really dim because this thing has clearly seen a lot of use. Display the next message, which it does exactly what you think. It shows the next message in the queue. And if there's no more in the queue, there's the display. Um, this switch is between auto and manual, as you know. That flashes when it's in manual mode. This displays valid versus all messages. Or So in pulse, it usually will send two rounds of data, right? And the receiver only acknowledges the panel once it's received two of the same. Now, if you have this button in the in position, it'll display the report as soon as it gets the first round of data from the panel. Now, um, if it's in the out position, it waits till it gets the second round and acknowledges before actually showing you. Now, I don't have a panel set up for pulse and with contact ID, it doesn't matter because it's a single round format. Now, on the right, we have the time and the date, and faulted line, that shows whenever lines are faulted, it'll scroll them, which I might show that at the end. I have a bunch of LEDs across here. For this, we have um, channel numbers, account number, so receiver number is gonna be zero because it's set to zero. Group number, um, really that's the line number in this case, because each line is on a different group, but if you had, usually in most situations, if you had like lines one through four on a group, and lines, I don't know, six through eight on another group you would you could set all lines of one group to show as group one it's configurable there's a little selector on each line card and uh the receiver number is set by a switch under here which i'll show you in a moment so these are event type leds so if we receive a fire alarm the fire alarm led comes on as you might expect same with all the other categories over here we have other general leds so line fault comes on anytime there's at least one line card that's in a fault condition Computer comes on whenever there's, the computer is not responding. Same with printer, AC, you get the idea. Same with low battery. Message status, uh, there's the valid LED. So that comes on once the second round of a pulse format comes in and the receiver acknowledges. But when you have it set to display every message, whether it's valid or not, um, that doesn't come on until it receives the second round. Uh, waiting just indicates there's more in the queue and active indicates the line card is off hook communicating with a panel. Under here, we have more. Um, these two are used for setting the uh, day and the minute. So this is an off point up to do date setting and down for time setting. These two are for engineering testing. That basically just hard, cold starts the system, which we're not gonna do obviously because it clears date and time and I don't wanna set it again. These are various different options. Um, the top one is for engineer testing. Uh, number two is to set the printer output. If your printer will, does not need a line feed character, you can set it to only send a carriage return. Get you a better position here. And um, the PRN-off is used to select whether or not you're using a printer. 
So this thing will go into manual mode if the printer fails and you're using a printer. That way you don't lose reports. Uh, 1S-2S is the pre-handshake delay. So if you if the phone line needs additional time to stabilize after it picks up, you can set that to two seconds. It's set to one. 12 hour, 24 hour is, shows like the clock format. It's in 24 hour. Uh, 1RG and 2RG sets the ring count for answering. It's set to one ring. And off and computer is the same thing as the printer off thing but uh for the computer so if the computer fails it'll go into um manual mode so that's everything under there and now uh let's show a panel reporting i guess so cool thing about this receiver is contact id and Ademco express and Ademco high speed were all designed around the 685 so this receiver works really well with panels that do contact id especially at Ademco panels because that should make sense same manufacturer magical things happen so let's go ahead and arm this panel. Um, I forgot to change my code so you won't be able to see. Do away. And I'm going to let you listen to the report on this phone. Arm away. I'm going to use contact ID. See the active light flash when it picks up. And there we go. It's in automatic mode. So the alert tone does not sound when that event Arm comes in. Away. But we see account number 0000, and again, those those displays don't flicker like that in real life. It's just a frame rate thing. And um, this isn't a high-speed report. So high-speed sends every zone status, and that's what the channels are. Additionally, with a supervisory channel, which I, I don't want to get into explaining that. That's really complicated format. But in the case of contact ID, it'll actually show an English description if the receiver knows what it is. And the account number is indeed 0000. So we can do that to clear the display. Now let's put it in manual mode, and we'll disarm it. So, do this, silence the alert, clear the display, and now we can disarm the panel. Disarm. And the same kind of thing will happen, but the alert tone will sound when the event comes in. See, the receiver is active. There we are. Silence the alert. And you'll see the little opening LED comes up on there because it was an opening report. And it's my next message, you get the idea. So let's go ahead and do, um, first let's put it back in auto. And I'm gonna send a, an opening and then a closing, or a closing and then an opening. And I'll show you, it'll scroll through the events by itself. And then I'll do the same thing in manual mode so you can tell that you have to manually go through each one. So. Arm ring. Arm away. Exit now. So now I'll let you hear a report to events. So now you'll watch closing, opening. So it goes through those. Um, it'll go to the next event by itself once the computer acknowledges the first the one that's currently processing. And clear display. Now we'll put it back into manual mode. Come on, there we go. It's a little bit slow. It's an old processor is running at two megahertz in there. It's a Z80 processor. Now um, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to arm it and then disarm it, and then I'll show you having to go through it manually in manual mode. Arm away. Okay. Now. Disarm. And now we wait for it to report. It's funny. It takes longer for the panel to dial than it does to actually report. Now you would silence the alert. And this is meant for if you have a, you're a central station operator sitting right in front of the thing, which obviously we don't do that anymore. We have computer auto automation for a reason. You would manually handle the event then display the next message, which in this case is an opening report. And then you get to the end. So yeah, it's kind of interesting. Now I'll leave it in manual mode and let's do something else. Let's do a fire alarm. So we're gonna do a fire panic with these two keys. And then I'll go ahead and disarm it. And reset it. Yes. And I'll pick up the phone. There we go. So we got a fire alarm. 
and um, see how it doesn't know that that's exactly an alarm code because there's so many contact ID codes. You're never gonna fit all the text in that for the in the ROMs in this thing. So if it doesn't have English text in its ROM for that exact code, it just shows um, the code. So yeah, fire alarm, display next message. We got a restoral, display next message. Uh, opening report. And yeah, so that's kind of the operation that way. And we can do a hold up alarm. So that's a silent panic to star and pound, at least on this panel. That's how I have it programmed. And it'll show as hold up in the top left. There we go. And yeah, so it's kind of neat that it shows the actual event type like that. It's kind of like the Omega Alarm 6000 receiver up here. It'll actually, it has individual LEDs for the event type as well. I think that's kind of interesting. So now, um, that's just kind of how you know it was clearly meant to be used by a person, not only just by computer automation. It's the whole idea of manual mode. So we can display next message. And let's go ahead and reset the panel. And let's put this back in automatic mode. Actually, I'm gonna keep it in. I'm gonna keep it in manual just for a test. So I want to try something. And I'll, you see how receiver events are converted to high-speed codes. That's actually one of the most annoying things about this receiver. Is that so much ran so many random things are converted to high-speed for no clear reason. But um, yep, there we go. Restore or report. So uh, one thing I wanted to try is I wanted to see if I have that in the in position, which technically I guess we could. I'm trying to remember what the um, what the programming entry would be for that. Four? I think it might be four. Well, let's give it a shot. Um, I'm gonna try to get it to use pulse, so. Okay, change the reporting format to both fours. I don't know if that's the correct thing, but no matter what the format is, this receiver should be able to take it, so I guess we'll find out. Let's arm the panel. And this might be a pulse format. Arm away. Exit now. Interesting. That was an MCO Express. That was not what I was expecting. Okay. What else could it be? I'm trying to remember what the uh, what the entry would be for a four plus two. Well, let's just try um, a 3 plus 1 code, because um, I know what that is. That would be a 0 or 1. So, let's do 0, just because it's the ADEMCO standard, and may as well. Oh. It's on. Ready? Uh, Alright, changed it. Lynx is a little bit slow. Alright, well, let's go ahead and quick arm it. I don't know what code that's going to send, but... Um, I have it set to display all reports right now. And we'll see if we can catch that valid LED operation. Let's try and contact ID. Now it's doing pulse reporting. And theoretically, it'll show up before it sends the second round. Maybe not. Interesting. Well, theoretically, it was supposed to show a valid there. And if we do that, closing, valid. Interesting. Um, it was, I think it was supposed to do the valid. Maybe I'm thinking of the Ademco 660. I don't know if the 685 actually does that. Interesting. Well, that's it using pulse reporting. Um, I'll have to make some more demonstrations on this thing when I get a printer connected to it, as well as when I have it connected to our automation system. And yeah, but for now, that's a quick little demo of it and showing it in operation. It's a pretty cool little receiver. Well, little I say, but this thing is bigger than any of my others. And I must say this thing is very heavy, but um, yeah, it's a nice receiver that works really well with the Demco panels and it's super old, so it's cool. Um, yeah, that's it for now.